Paramedic Exam 1 1. During the initial phase of an acute stress reaction, which of the following physiological responses will occur? A. Normal vital signs that remain unchanged. B. Increased vital signs that quickly return to normal. C. Increased pulse rate and pupillary dilatation. D. Lowered pulse rate and pupillary constriction. Answer. C. Both good stress, eustress, and bad stress, distress, will initially cause sympathetic stimulation such as increased heart and respiratory rate, bronchodilation, dilated pupils, and increased blood flow to the skeletal muscles. 2. You use an end-tidal carbon dioxide detector as a tool to determine if endotracheal intubation has been correctly obtained. The absence of carbon dioxide in exhaled air after six ventilations indicates that the endotracheal tube has been a. Correctly placed. B. Placed in the esophagus. C. Placed in the right mainstem bronchus. D. Placed in the left mainstem bronchus. Answer. B. No carbon dioxide after six ventilations indicates either that the tube is in the esophagus or that the patient has been dead long enough that no carbon dioxide is being produced. 3. In which of the following situations should a paramedic perform an initial assessment first? A. During cardiac arrest at a swimming pool. B. When the patient is in a toxic environment. C. When the scene is not yet secured by law enforcement. D. During a rescue from a fully involved structure fire. Answer. A. Before assessing airway, breathing, and circulation, it is necessary to remove the patient, and yourself, to a place of relative safety. 4. The focused history and physical examination of a patient begins after you have a. Controlled immediate threats to the patient's life. b. Transported the patient to the hospital. c. Secured the scene and gained access to the patient. d. Contacted medical control for direction. Answer. a. The purpose of the focused history and physical is to detect additional problems after you have controlled immediate threats to the patient's life. The ongoing assessment is typically performed during transport. Medical control may be consulted anytime during the call when you feel it is appropriate or whenever your protocols and standing orders require it. 5. You arrive on the scene and find an elderly male complaining of severe abdominal and back pain. Upon further questioning, he states that the pain is all over the left side. On palpation, you feel a pulsating mass in the abdomen. This patient is most likely suffering from a pulsating diaphragm lesions. B. Acute arterial occlusion. C. Acute pulmonary embolism. D. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. Answer. D. This patient is exhibiting the classic signs and symptoms of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Further palpation may cause the aneurysm to rupture, so be very careful in assessing this patient. The other choices will not cause abdominal pulsations to occur. 6. This patient's vital signs have been worsening steadily throughout the time he has been under your care. Treatment for this patient should include A. Cardiac monitoring B. 2 liters of crystalloid solution C. Dopamine administration D. PASG mast application Answer. A. Cardiac monitoring should always be performed when you suspect an aneurysm is present. Rapid infusion of crystalloid solution is often indicated in the treatment of shock, but the fluid must be titrated to patient response. Dopamine is indicated for cardiogenic shock. Shock in this patient would be due to hypovolemia. Dopamine is contraindicated in the presence of uncorrected hypovolemia. PASG mast may be indicated for treatment of AAA in some jurisdictions, however, it is not a standardized treatment. 7. The hypoxic drive is regulated by A. Low POW 2 B. High POW 2. C. High oxygen saturation percentage. D. Low oxygen saturation percentage. Answer. A. Copt patients can no longer rely upon normal regulatory mechanisms to control their respirations. The hypoxic drive measures for low levels of oxygen in the bloodstream to increase respiratory rate. 8. The posterior tibial pulse can be palpated near the A. Arch of the foot. B. Medial ankle bone. C. Posterior knee. D. Top of the foot. Answer. B. The posterior tibial pulse is assessed just below and posterior to where the ankle bone protrudes medially. The pulse located on the top of the foot is the dorsalis pedis.
The popliteal pulse is located behind the knee. 9. Progressively deeper, faster breathing alternating gradually with shallow, slower breathing is called. A. Agonal respirations. B. Cheney Stokes respirations. C. Cusmore's respirations. D. Byatt's respirations. Answer. B. Byatt's breathing is an irregular pattern. Cheney Stokes respirations are regular and deep. 10. Which patient should be transported immediately, with minimal on scene care and any attempts at stabilization performed en route to the hospital? A. Female, age 45, pulse 132, systolic BP 78. B. Male, age 60, pulse 115, respiratory rate 12. C. Female, age 28, systolic BP 96, respiratory rate 18. D. Male, age 54, pulse 98, diastolic BP 80. Answer, A. Indications for immediate transport include any signs or symptoms of shock, sustained pulse rate greater than 120 or less than 50, systolic BP less than 90, and respiratory rate less than 10 or greater than 29. Based only on these vital signs, the first patient appears to already be in shock. 11. The collective change in vital signs associated with the late stages of increasing intracranial pressure consists of a. Increasing pulse rate, shallow respirations, increasing blood pressure. B. Slowing pulse rate, deep or erratic respirations, increasing blood pressure. C. Rapid and shallow pulse, deep respirations, decreasing blood pressure. D. Quickening pulse rate, shallow respirations, decreasing blood pressure. Answer. B. This change in vital signs comprises Cushing's reflex, a sign of increasing intracranial pressure. Cushing's reflex is also sometimes called Cushing's triad or Cushing's response. 12. If your patient has an open abdominal wound with a loop of bowel obtruding, you should treat this with a. Or a trauma dressing secured with triangular bandages. b. An occlusive dressing secured on only three sides. c. A wet sterile dressing and an occlusive dressing. d. A clean gauze dressing secured with sterile tape. Answer. c. The most appropriate dressing for an evisceration is the application of a wet sterile dressing, which keeps the organs moist, and an occlusive dressing, which provides a barrier against further contamination and heat loss. 13. Which of the following patients is most critical in terms of age and mechanism of injury? A. An 86-year-old female with a fractured clavicle. B. A 28-year-old male with a fractured femur. C. A 43-year-old female with a fractured rib. D. A 56-year-old male with a pelvic fracture. Answer. D. Each fracture has a potential blood loss of one or more units per fracture site. Because of its ring shape, the pelvis frequently has two or more fractures present. In addition, nerve and blood vessel damage and injury to genitourinary organ injuries can complicate the severity of this injury. Patients with pelvis fractures are always considered high-priority patients and should be rapidly stabilized and transported. If a patient has bilateral femur fractures, he or she is also a high-priority patient. 14. An unconscious patient who has one dilated pupil that is reactive to light is showing early signs of a transient ischemic attacks, b. cerebral artery aneurysm, c. status epilepticus, d. increased intracranial pressure. Answer. d. A unilaterally dilated pupil may be an early sign of increased intracranial pressure. As swelling increases in the brain, it puts pressure on the optic nerve that is located near the area of swelling. 15. Using your sense of touch during a physical examination is called A. Palpation. B. Percussion. C. Palpitation. D. Auscultation. Answer. A. The technique of palpation is using touch during a physical examination to gather information. Auscultation is listening with a stethoscope. Percussion is using gentle tapping in order to identify the presence of air or fluid in body tissues. Palpitations are heartbeat sensations that feel like your heart is pounding or racing. 16. A harsh upper airway sound that can be heard when the patient inhales is called A. Strider. B. Restriction. C. Diphonia. D. Dyspnea. Answer. A. Strider can usually be heard without a stethoscope and emanates from the area of the throat. 17. You suspect that a patient has a complete airway obstruction when he a. cannot swallow, b. cannot cough, 
C can only whisper. D can exhale only with significant effort. Answer. B choices C and D both indicate some air exchange. Choices A has no relation to the air passageway. 18. No breath sounds in one lung field may indicate which of the following conditions? A. Pneumothorax. B. Partial airway obstruction. C. Flail chest. D. Pulmonary embolism. Answer. A. The other three choices, while serious, generally do not cause complete collapse of a lung. 19. Why is ventilation of the pediatric patient with a bag valve mask more difficult than ventilating an adult? A. The infant is more combative. B. The infant needs a lower concentration of oxygen. C. It is more difficult to create a good seal in an infant. D. The glottic opening is smaller in an infant. Answer. C. The bridge of the nose in a pediatric patient may make a mask seal more difficult to achieve. Additionally, the mask size needed to fit the pediatric patient's face may not be available. 20. The pharyngotracheal lumen airway should be removed if the patient A. Vomits. B. Becomes tachycardic. C. Regains consciousness. D. Has poor compliance. Answer. C. If the patient is unconscious and vomits, the PTL will help prevent aspiration. Instead, if a gag reflex returns, the PTL will have to be removed before the patient vomits.